Now we have to paint the uh, this demon sword, or I don't know, this is some kind of demon sword. I'm going to use a OSL of fire, some lava style. So I put the, the arm uh, with blue tack to see how it co affects uh, the, the surrounding areas of the sword. And with a dark blue, this dark blue, I'm darkening all the areas surrounding the sword because we need to make darker areas surrounding uh, the areas of a OSL first uh, before applying the, the light. It will increase increase the, the illusion of light. Over that, with white, it will push uh, the lights in the areas that are more affected by, by this uh, fire. Look how I boosting uh, or, or covering the areas, but then keeping part of the previous dark blue uh, without covering it with the white because I need this dark blue to divide, to separate the area of light from the normal area of, of painting. It is very important to push the white till you achieve pure white or close to pure white in the areas that are more luminous. Because if not, when we apply the next color, we will uh, achieve uh, some kind of gray stone or, or, a, or a less intense yellow in this case. The yellow, which is the, the color which is closer to the origin of the OSL, of the, the source of the OSL, it is uh, located in the skulls and surrounding it and applying orange. Both of them are contrast paints because I like them a lot to, to make this kind of effects because of its saturation and um, because they are very controllable. They are like inks. As you see, the areas that are very dark, like the hand, uh, are barely affected by these contrast paints, but the areas that are white or gray uh, are affected with this color easily. This is a white ink that I'm using in a control wash to cover all those uh, gaps in, in the surrounding the, the skulls and where the light is coming from. As I want to create something more luminous, I'm correcting it by applying once again the white in both sides, obviously, and uh, applying the white, the same white, uh, sorry, the same yellow, uh, but in this case, covering a bigger area. It is very saturated, as you see. This is what I'm looking for. So now that I'm happy with the result, it's time to apply the orange again, far them from the source and recovering the gaps with white. Now that we have this base work done, uh, uh, we can apply a, a shadow boost with dark purple in the upper part of the sword and the surrounding areas of the affected areas uh, of, the, of the miniature. That means the lower part of the hand or the forearm. But uh, you can do it by brush, for example, or maybe you can skip this, this step. In my case, I think uh, it's worth the, the time. And now it's time to work with the brass because we need to outline everything very good. Uh, you have to know, because I have talked about that in almost all the videos, that is very important when making an OSL effect um, to outline the edges properly. So the, the edges that are closer to the source of light are going to be very luminous, while the edges that are farther from the source of light has to be less luminous. That's the reason because all the all the uh, edges that are farther from the skulls are going to be more orange, orangey, uh, like those ones, for example, that are very far, uh, more or less far from the, the souls. 
and I'm using this orange yellow. Well, remember that if you like what I'm doing, you can support me by subscribing to the YouTube channel and giving me a thumbs up in the video if you like it, but also by subscribing to the Patreon. Uh, for only 3 euros per month, you will receive exclusive videos about different topics like fundamentals of painting, different techniques, and you will receive exclusive uh, discounts on different shops. Uh, so I think it's worthly for you for only those 3 euros and you will help me a lot to still continue creating uh, content in the, in the different media uh, formats and help me to grow even more this community that we are creating around this project. i uh, leave you with the video, thank you for watching and bye bye! Uh, and remember that the light is coming from the skull, so all the, the cuts that you are outlining have to be outlined, outlined from uh, below, not from above, and that, which is the, the way you outline uh, a cut like this in a classic um, volumetry interpretation. But well, as I was saying, um, the areas that are farther from the social light has to be more orange. That's the reason because uh, those parts in the in the solar are more orange looking. But for example, it's not the same how it reflects the light, the leather than the metallic uh, spikes. So the metallic spikes or the chains or the armor can be more luminous, more contrasted, uh, despite of the fact that they are farther from the source of light, because at the end a metallic part is more reflective than the leather, you know? So you can see how uh, I use this white plus yellow color to outline the closer parts to the source of light, but I'm using almost pure white to add some brights in the spikes that are farther from the, the sword. That's because of the uh, nature of the material. Same thing here, for example, some reflections, orange reflection in a very far uh, area from the source because this area is reflective, is metallic, so I can interpret it in an exaggerated way uh, to create this, this reflection. You can add some fluor orange to boost more the saturation of the color. Uh, and as well, obviously, uh, fluor yellow. It's up to you. In camera it's not very noticeable, but in hand it's something that, that looks a bit better. And when we have more or less finished the sword, we can put it in the figure to continue painting this part. Uh, I start painting it in yellow because it's easier to control the luminosity of this area over yellow when I apply the orange. And because I have the sword more or less finished, uh, maybe in a 90%, I will add some other detail, but uh, in a 90% is finished, I can uh, put in the figure with the blue jack and see how it looks and um, calculate better the influence of the color in the surrounding areas, or the influence in, of the uh, OSL in this case. And the process is pretty similar than the one we have followed in the sword. Areas like this one, the tubes that are metallic, have to be highly reflective, while the other parts have to be a bit less. The farther ones would be more orange, you know, and the closer ones will be more yellow. Same idea, same execution, execution. So I think it's quite clear. You can see here the, the, the importance of uh, plan a bit how you are going to paint something because if we didn't know how we are going to paint uh, this part and we paint it uh, like the others and then we have to cover it with this OSL, we are wasting a lot of time uh, painting something that we, we are going to cover. That was the reason because at the beginning of the video I leave this part without painting it or even with a width of, of white, if you remember, uh, because I, I have the idea of painting it with the OSL. So think 
before starting a project like this, especially think a bit about uh, what you're going to, to do if you want to save uh, some time. And well, guys, now that, that we have finished this weapon, we can uh, go for the next video. Bye bye.